All right, guys, so um, welcome to the first episode of my raccoon trapping series. Uh, this is going to be, a, uh, I'm going to call it the equipment. Um, it's going to be a breakdown of the basic equipment you need. Well, you don't really need all of them, but you definitely should probably start out with one of these. And I'll tell you which one is more user friendly for a beginner and which one's more complex. You should probably have a year or two of experience before you should use it. Um, I'm kind of just going to go into detail on them a little bit. So um, without further ado, guys, we'll get started here. Um, I'm going to start off with what I would say is probably the simplest for a beginner. Um, that's going to be your dog proof trap. This here's a Duke pull only dog proof trap. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but um, Duke pull only dog proof trap. This one's powder coated. So that the powder coat if you get the powder coated ones it'll protect these springs in here from getting moisture in there it'll make your springs last longer and be a lot stronger so um anyways guys yeah this is your duke dog proof um you just compress the springs like so fold the trigger over like that and then you put that up and there you go there's your set dog proof i'm gonna have a couple episodes just explaining how to use the use these and their application but um, definitely recommend dog proofs for a beginner level um, raccoon trapper. I know I still use a ton of them. Um, a, lot of, a lot of raccoon trappers use a ton of them. So definitely a really good tool. However, now I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the trap that I started out with trapping. And that would be a one and a half coil spring. Um, without a doubt, in my opinion, probably the most universal trap as far as what species you're going after after would be this one and a half coil spring um this one right here is a duke um you guys can see i mean it's got some wear and tear on it i've been using these for quite a while but um i also like to point out on these coil spring traps if i'm trapping for raccoon with this i don't want any pan tension on that at all i want it to be a floppy pan like that and you can adjust that with this little nut right here and this screw head, if you guys can see that. On these Duke, this is a Duke. You just put a Phillips screwdriver in this end, get a little crescent wrench or something on this little nut right here. And that's how you can adjust your pan tension. But I always, if I'm raccoon trapping, especially in the water, definitely running no pan tension on that at all, simply for the fact that you can pick up mink, muskrat, whatever, with this coil spring. So anyways, guys, I'll kind of just show you how to set it here. Um, I just use my hands, guys. I just pull the springs apart like so, fold it up, lift your pan up onto there like so, and there you go, there's, there's your set coil spring. Um, I don't night latch any of my one and a half coil springs for raccoons. Um, I really don't think it matters that much, especially if they're in the water. On dry ground, you could mess with it a little bit, but I don't really think it matters, so for that reason, I'm not going to go into night latching at all. But yeah, guys, that's the one and a half coil spring. Definitely, in my opinion, the most universal trap you can have as a trapper as far as catching a species go. I mean, I've held a beaver in one of these things, coyotes. Um, I even got a bobcat in at one time, which I had to let go, and that was kind of an interesting experience. But um, yeah, guys, I love one and a half coil springs. They work great. So. Um, and then we're going to get into something that's a little bit more complex and I won't say dangerous, but it definitely can be if you don't know how to use it properly. I'm going to just adjust this camera just a little bit. So this is a 220 Conibear right here. Um, this one right here is a Duke 220, I believe. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's kind of an older one, but you guys can see I already have it to where the safeties are latched on there. But um, they won't come like that. I'll actually pull them off here. So you guys can kind of see what it looks like without them safeties on. Just so you know what you're looking for if you're out at the store or something. But um, here's what you guys are gonna get. So the triggers aren't gonna look like this. I've modified these triggers just a little bit. Kind of made them the shape that I wanted them. But um, th this is a 220 Conibear, guys. Now, these are not legal in every state as far as using on dry ground. So make sure you check your rules and regulations on that. But here in Iowa, we can use these on dry ground. And I absolutely love them as far as trapping raccoons. Um, all you do to set them, you guys saw it when I had the safeties down already, but 
I do this with my hands. They make setters for it and everything else, but just compress that, safety on. Same thing on the other one. Compress that spring down. Flip that safety up, on, and there you go, guys. And then from there, you just take that 220. Um, give me fits here. These things can be really, they're a really good trap, but they take a little time and learning to really understand how to use them. So I actually get this turned around here for you guys. Um, so here's kind of how it's going. Um, I'm gonna show you guys kind of a top angle here. So you're gonna compress it like so. And then on this dog up here, you have two notches, okay? You got the one that's a little bit further out and then you got this one. Okay, I personally prefer setting it on that first one right there. Now my triggers are facing out just a little bit, which I don't really like that much. I'll probably modify that whenever I get it out in the field, but that's the one I prefer to do it on. Um, you can also do it on the other one. I don't really think it makes a difference, guys. Um, not enough of a difference to where you're going to notice a drastic change in my opinion but some guys swear by either way my opinion doesn't really matter both ways are going to catch critters so um yeah guys that's a 220 for you so now i'm going to move more into my um uh the staking part of this episode and kind of kind of explain to you guys um what i use to stake these traps so the most basic thing that a beginner can use would be a piece of rebar. Um, this is a 24 inch piece of rebar here. It's got a washer welded on the end of it. Works great. Used these for about two years straight before I switched over to using pogos. Um, but rebar works guys. It just, if you're running so many traps to the point where you have enough rebar, this stuff gets really heavy really fast, but it works great. And then next to this, this is the washer rebar steak. Um, I'll show you guys, here's a T-bar stake. These also work very well. This one here's a 30 inch. I use these for beaver trapping, but yeah, this is a 30 inch T-bar stake. Um, work very good. However, especially with using your dog proofs, you have to be careful because they can get that wrapped around here. I'll actually just show you guys here quick. They can get this chain wrapped around here and if they can get these springs compressed against that at all, just a little bit of pressure there, and then they're gone. So not saying it's gonna really happen with a really stout dog proof, but if you get one that's kind of older or the springs aren't as good, they can definitely pop themselves right out of them dog proofs. So I would not recommend one of these for using with dog proofs. However, the occasion I just showed you will not happen as much as it may seem like based on how I'm talking about it. Um, it's kind of rare, but they can get out, and I like to minimize losing fur because I definitely hate pulling up and having a snapped off trap. And the last but not least would be my favorite. And this is what I use a lot of. Um, this is a pogo anchor. I make all these myself. I probably have, oh boy, five or six hundred of them that I've made now. Um, this is just a two inch washer on here. It's got a J that comes through it, the J-hook is closed, and then 24 inches of cable that I have aluminum ferrule crimped onto the washer, and then I have made myself about, I don't even know how big that loop is. Big enough to get this washer through, guys, is all you really need. But um, yeah, I've crimped that on here, and this is what I use. Now to put this in the ground, you have to have one of these. I mean, I don't think there's really if, ands, or buts about it. You have to have a pogo driver. Um, this is the heavy duty one just because I'm hard on stuff and I don't really trust the skinnier one because I'd probably find a way to break it. But you guys can see this. It's got that little slot in there, just a little tiny slot, and then it's got a notch. And I'll show you guys that that's thing's purpose here. So as you slide your pogo anchor into this pogo driver, if I can get it in here, there you go. So I got it in there. You guys can see that washer fits perfectly into that little little notch in there, that little whatever you want to call it. And then this little, little itty bitty thing right here is for your J-hook to sit in. Now, when I stake this into the ground, I hold the pogo like this, I turn it around and I drive it into the ground. That's how I do it, guys. Um, absolutely love these pogo anchors. Um, if you can get them, or make them yourself, we definitely recommend them. They're a heck of a lot lighter than rebar, I'll promise you that. 
But um, anyways, guys, I'm gonna get more into the, the 220 systems now. Now there's two ways, well, there's a lot more than two ways, but two ways that I've done that I've been able to stabilize my 220s pretty good. Um, what I started out with would be this. This is your typical, your 220 stabilizer. You get your springs on here, um, and then it's it's good to go. Um, I'll actually just show you guys real quick. I'll get it on there to kind of show you guys how it works. One second. Get my 220 set up here. All right, so we got our 220 set now, maybe. I don't know why this one's giving me so many fits. There we go, okay. So we got our 220 set now, right? There you go. So this actual stabilizer system right here, you're gonna slide your 220 onto this, and it's gonna hold it right there. Now you guys can see it's got a little bit of play, you know, and whatever, but, um, this this will hold your trap there. I mean, they're, they're not going to knock it off of there by any means unless they're Really interested in just playing with it and at that point they're probably going to catch themselves anyways But this is one method that I used to do it um, And the method that I've most recently started using I got this from Iowa Trapper um, I take no credit for this idea at all, but this is a muskrat stretcher guys I've cut the bottom off of it and all I'll do with this is I'll take it, I'll compress it, like so. Then I will get my 220 here, compress this muskrat stretcher, run it between these springs, and then I'll shove that into the ground. Now what this allows me to do is I can put grass into the sides of this and make a funnel where they're gonna wanna duck their head down and go right through that conibear, guys. So. I definitely recommend one of these two stabilizing systems as far as the 220s go. Um, I love the rat stretchers, but if you like something else, then keep using it. Whatever works for you guys, don't change it. But I would highly recommend thinking about the muskrat stretcher idea if you can use 220s or 160s or 155s on dry land even. I think even with the smaller conibear, having something where you can get their head down and into it would be better. But I don't know. I've always just used 220s and they work great. So anyways, guys, that's kind of just an overview of the equipment here. Um, absolutely love all the equipment that I got. Works great. So anyways, guys, we're going to be moving on to episode two here. Um, that's going to be footholds on dry land. So stay tuned, guys. we got a lot of episodes to go and it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's getting me pumped.